Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Kogel. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Systems, Enterprise Networking, and Cloud Group. And today, just have a quick uh, slideshow and demo uh, talking about iPixie. So iPixie is part of the Day Zero device provisioning uh, feature set. Um, it's very similar to ZTP, uh, plug and play, uh, DHCP auto install. Uh, iPixie is a feature that is used to uh, boot up a device uh, over the network. So it's used to provide a uh, iOS XE boot image file from the DHCP service that's uh, loaded by iOS XE. As far as uh, device, uh, day zero device provisioning goes, there's a couple of features, uh, ZTP, plug and play, uh, as well as the web UI. Um, these are just some, some of the common features that are available within iOS XE. Now, as far as device onboarding goes, um, today's process is when we order equipment from Cisco, either um, through uh, a customer or a partner, then um, that equipment ships, uh, is arrived, and then typically what happens is the network admin goes and does the, the pre-installation on there, making sure the operating system is installed and that it uh, has a configuration if needed. Then the device is uh, either sent or, or shipped to the, the final site and then actually installed. So there's a couple um, steps in the way here, and, and each of these steps, um, there's a time and a, and a financial cost to them, as well as operational challenges on, on all sides of this. So iPixie, ZTP, and, and PNP, they all help uh, with some of these operational challenges. So ZTP and PNP are, are really the flexible uh, solutions for day zero device provisioning. Um, today we're really just uh, focusing on iPixie, which isn't really as flexible as these solutions. Uh, but I did just want to call out that plug and play ZTP, these are some features that uh, have some advanced workflows, as well as the day zero wizard, right? These are options that you have for configuring the, the, the device when you first get it. Now, this is um, kind of like the North Star here of the automated network infrastructure. You know, how we want the network to be is that we uh, turn on our device, it boots up, it goes through uh, the day zero provisioning process using ZTP. Uh, it goes out uh, onto the network, it goes uh, checks in with the, like a config management service, for example, and um, understands which device, uh, which code to run, uh, which configuration to run. So the Cisco DNA Center solution is the controller-based solution um, where we can use a workflow to uh, claim our device and manage the configuration and the code version on there. That's tightly coupled with the Cisco DNA Center solution. Whereas the ZTP uh, solution is controllerless. Um, using ZTP as well as iPixie, it's up to us as network operators to run the network infrastructure, uh, typically that's DHCP, as well as uh, manage the Python file and the code files um, to get our devices onto where they need to be. So just uh, some comparison between uh, ZTP and iPixie. Specifically, ZTP uh, is, is quite a flexible solution when it's uh, coupled with the guest shell and the Python API. Again, that's not the focus today, um, but today we're just looking at iPixie. So iPixie um, really is just used for loading the device image file over the network, whereas ZTP um, is much more flexible because we can load the image as well as manage the configuration directly. So that's just an overview of the various solutions for day zero. Let's actually go double click on the iPixie solution here now. So this is um, the reference material. This is right from the configuration guide. And you know it basically just calls out what exactly uh, iPixie is, which is an enhanced version of the Pixie, the pre-boot execution environment. Uh, it's an open standard that we're following and have implemented with the iPixie client uh, on the device. Um, when you're working with this protocol, I definitely encourage you to review the config guide because it has uh, all the details um, for the feature. Now, when we're actually going to implement this, there's a couple uh, components that we need to configure. So um, first and foremost is the DCP server. Uh, here's the example from ISC DCP server where uh, I'm specifying the device by MAC address and IP, as well as the file name uh, that I want this device to boot. In this example, I'm specifying uh, the 1695 uh, version of iOS XE to boot for this device. Now we need to set some configuration on the device uh, so that it knows to boot using iPixie instead of to boot using the traditional the default, uh, the bin file. So we can put uh, one or two configurations in here. The first one is the boot iPixie forever. You know, that's the most common um, configuration, but you can also have a boot iPixie with a timeout as well as a, a secondary file uh, that you can boot. So if iPixie does not reply, 
then your device is still going to boot up and, uh, and boot the image that you have specified. There's a show command, just to show boot. Uh, and what we're checking for here is the, the boot mode. Uh, in the example here, the boot mode is set to IPXE forever, meaning that it's going to do IPXE or it's going to send DCP until it gets a response back with the file name so that it can then go and boot the system. Uh, again, I put the, just one more reference slide in here. This is what the device actually looks like uh, when we boot it up. This is just a log uh, from the console. Uh, really for reference, but again, we'll see this when we go take a look at the, the running device here uh, coming up shortly. One other thing um, that I typically do when working with uh, the day zero options is to enable some DCP debugging. So in this case, I'm using TCP dump um, just to watch the DCP transactions. Uh, I've just highlighted that um, the device has gone out and done a discover and then a request. Um, and that's part of the day zero um, boot up of the device to do the DCP exchange. And then the next part of this is actually to go and, uh, and download the bin file and load it. Okay, so with that, um, let's go over to the demo. It's basically uh, three or four steps that we'll be going through. We'll review the DCP configuration. Uh, we'll enable the TCP dump so that we can understand when the DCP exchange is happening. We'll take a look at the device. Uh, we'll take a look at just the show version and the show boot to understand what the current configuration is set to. And then we'll just reload the device. Uh, we'll wait for it to go down for uh, reboot. And when it comes up, it'll do the DCP exchange, grab the code, uh, and then boot up uh, just like normal. So with that, let's go over to the demo and uh, take a look at the running system. Okay, so here we are uh, in the demo. Let's uh, just take a look at the uh, DCP configuration file first. So it's over here in etsy dcp dcpd.conf. Uh, and what I'm highlighting here is um, these three or four lines here. Uh, this is uh, uh, specifying the uh, IP address to assign and the ethernet uh, address, the MAC address of the device um, that we're specifically working with in this case, uh, as well as the code uh, version. So in this case, again, 1694. So with that, let's turn on the, uh, the TCP dump. So we'll see the, uh, the DCP transactions uh, as they occur. So we'll just move this up uh, to the top here. And then let's, um, since we're logged into the device, we can do a show boot. Um, what we're looking for here is the boot mode is set to IPXE forever. Uh, and then we can also do a um, show, oops, uh, pardon me, show then zero and a show version. Um, this is going to just give us all the version details. And what I'm looking for here is, um, you know, really just the last part to tell us that, yeah, we're already running 16.9 and we're in uh, bundle mode. So bundle mode is the, the mode of operation uh, when we're using this type of boot mode. And if I scroll up here to um, the uptime here, we can just see that the uptime has been only just 30 minutes because I just rebooted this. And the system image file, right? This is the boot file uh, that's going to boot um, when it reloads. So it already knows that this is the image that we booted last time. However, if there's an update from DCP, then uh, that'll be honored uh, instead of what's set in the static config here. Okay, so with that, we can go and uh, reload the device. Okay, so it's going down uh, for reload. Now it's gonna take uh, maybe a minute or so um, while it reboots uh, and then starts up again. When it starts up, then uh, is when we'll actually see the DCP uh, transaction. Okay, so uh, we posted from Ramon, and now it's starting the IPXE, the network boot. So uh, shortly we should see the DCP transaction up here. Um, but it does do v6 first, so uh, I'm not actually watching for v6, I'm just watching for uh, v4 here. So after another probably 10 or 15 or 20 seconds, then um, here we see the, the v6 discovery. Uh, and next we'll see the v4, uh, and that's when we'll actually see the packets coming uh, in the TCP then.
Okay, so here we see the, um, the V4 DHCP transaction came in here. Um, what we're looking for is just the discover, right? So this is the discover uh, coming from, um, we can tell that this is the device here because we see the vendor class option, um, option 60, that tells us this is the C9300 24UX. And then um, we actually start to see um, the device boot uh, on the bottom window here. And if I just scroll back up uh, here, just past to where the uh, TCP dump started, then we'll actually see some more details about um, what happened uh, as part of that DCP transaction. So uh, here's the, the start of this. And so first we have the DCP Uh, discover right here and then the next thing that we have is the request after the request then we actually get to see some information from the uh, ipixie bootloader client here it's just telling us uh, which uh, data it's going to go get or which uh, boot file it's going to go get and then we actually see the the http get uh, happen here now while that's happening uh, we'll also notice that in the um, terminal window here, it starts downloading uh, the code. So let's actually take a look at this uh, configuration a little bit uh, in more detail here while it's transferring. So it tells us um, that it goes connects out to our DCP server, gets an IP address, and it learns about which boot file uh, to load. So what, once it learns about this boot file, it actually goes and attempts to boot from it. So and that's what's happening right now is that it's going out over to this web server and downloading this bin file from the web server. And that's what we see happening here, uh, with all the exclamation marks uh, as the bin file is actually copied over. So let's scroll down um, now that the image is done copying and uh, see what happens next. Okay, so it looks like the uh, boot file has finished copying. And so what's happening now is that it's just gonna load the boot file and actually uh, load the OS. Okay, great. So it looks like the uh, device has booted up uh, 16.9.4. Uh, we're almost back to the login prompt here and the device is ready to go. So um, what we can do now is uh, let's just uh, do a software upgrade. So what we can do is we can update um, the bin file on the DCP server and then again, issue a reload and the device is gonna go uh, learn about the new software version uh, from DCP and go ahead and install that. So uh, for that, uh, let's go in here to the DCP uh, server and uh, modify the DCP uh, configuration file uh, and instead of loading 16.9.4, we're gonna load 16.9.5, okay? So I've just updated this file here. Let's uh, review that again, just as we did previously. Uh, and this time it's set for 16.9.5. Now, if we go ahead and restart the uh, DCP service, it's, back, it's now been restarted to the changes are gonna now take effect. If we log back into this device, and take a look at the show boot, you know, just like we saw before, um, iPixie forever and it's running 16.9.4. Okay. So we can uh, just go ahead and reload this, uh, similar to what we did before, except this time now, because uh, we made the change to 16.9.5 up here on the DCP server, uh, when this reloads, then it's gonna boot up with 16.9.5. So let's, uh, let's fast forward and we'll come back when this is uh, completed.
Okay, so the device is back up. I've just logged in. Uh, if we do a show boot, um, again, nothing's changed here. Um, but if we do a show version, then of course we'll see now that it's running 16.95, right? And that's of course because we updated the DCP server configuration for iPixie. Again, let's just take a quick look at that file. And it's specifying now 16.95. When we started, it was showing the 16.94. So that's just a really quick demo um, of using iPixie to uh, upgrade the the iOS XE device from 16.94 to 16.95 in this example. Okay, so this concludes the demo for iPixie. We took a look at the DCP configuration file. We watched the uh, PCAPs for the TCP dump and the DCP exchange. Uh, we took a look at the show version to understand what version um, the device had booted from the DCP, uh, as well as that show boot to understand the iPixie forever boot mode that we were in. When we reloaded the, the device, um, it got the IP from DCP, it learned about the code version, uh, and then it booted and did a software upgrade and eventually uh, reloaded with the new code uh, booted as we expected. So this concludes the uh, demo and uh, the short video here that we have for iPixie. I hope it was informative. Thank you for watching.